Magnus Maximus Latin, Flavius Magnus Maximus Augustus, Welsh, Maxon Wledig c. 335, August 28, 388 was Roman Emperor in the western portion of the Empire from 383 to 388. In 383, as commander of Britain, he usurped the throne against Emperor Gratian, and by negotiation with Emperor Theodosius I, he was made emperor in Britannia and Gaul the next year while Gratian's brother Valentinian II retained Italy, Pannonia, Hispania, and Africa. In 387, Maximus's ambitions led him to invade Italy, resulting in his defeat by Theodosius I at the Battle of the Save in 388. In the view of some historians, his death marked the end of direct imperial presence in northern Gaul and Britain. Life Maximus was born c. 335 in Gaiaisia, on the estates of Count Theodosius the Elder, to whom he was a nephew. Maximus was the son of the general Flavius Iulius Eucarius and the brother of Marcellinus. Near contemporaries described his dignity as offended when lesser men were promoted to high positions. Maximus was a distinguished general, he served under Count Theodosius in Africa in 373 and on the Danube in 376. It is likely he also may have been a junior officer in Britain in 368, during the quelling of the Great Conspiracy. Assigned to Britain in 380, he defeated an incursion of the Picts and Scots in 381. The Western Emperor Gratian had become unpopular because of perceived favoritism toward Alans and Iranian-speaking people see also Sarmatians and Ossetians who were early adopters of Christianity and migrated both east and west from their homeland over Roman citizens. In 383 Maximus was proclaimed emperor by his troops. He went to Gaul to pursue his imperial ambitions, taking a large portion of the British garrison with him. Following his landing in Gaul, Maximus went out to meet his main opponent, Emperor Gratian, whom he defeated near Paris. Gratian, after fleeing, was killed at Lyon on August 25, 383. Continuing his campaign into Italy, Maximus was stopped from overthrowing Valentinian II, who was only twelve, when Theodosius I, the emperor in the east, sent Flavius Baudo with a powerful force to stop him. Negotiations followed in 384 including the intervention of Ambrose, Bishop of Milan, leading to an accord with Valentinian II and Theodosius I in which Maximus was recognized as Augustus in the West. Maximus made his capital at Augusta Trevororum Treves, Trier, in Gaul, and ruled Britain, Gaul, Spain and Africa. He issued coinage and a number of edicts reorganizing Gaul's system of provinces. Some scholars believe Maximus may have founded the office of the Cums Britannicum as well. He became a popular emperor. Quintus Aurelius Symmachus delivered a panegyric on Maximus's virtues. He used foederati forces such as the Alemanni to great effect. He was also a stern persecutor of heretics. It was on his orders that Priscillian and six companions were executed for heresy, in this case of Priscillianism, although the actual civil charges laid by Maximus himself were for the practice of magic. These executions went ahead despite the wishes of prominent men such as St. Martin of Tours. Maximus's Edict of 387 or 388, which censured Christians at Rome for burning down a Jewish synagogue, was condemned by Bishop Ambrose, who said people exclaimed, The emperor has become a Jew. In 387, Maximus managed to force Emperor Valentinian II out of Milan, after which he fled to Theodosius I. Theodosius and Valentinian then invaded from the east, and campaigned against Maximus in July-August 388, their troops being led by Richemirs and other generals. Maximus was defeated in the Battle of the Save, and retreated to Aquileia. Meanwhile, the Franks under Markimer had taken the opportunity to invade northern Gaul, at the same time further weakening Maximus's position. Andragathius, Magister Equitum of Maximus and the killer of Emperor Gratian, was defeated near Sistia, while Maximus's brother, Marcellinus, fell in battle at Poetovio. Maximus surrendered in Aquileia, and although he pleaded for mercy was executed. The Senate passed a decree of damnatio memoriae against him. However, his mother and at least two daughters were spared. Theodosius's trusted general Arbogast strangled Maximus's son, Flavius Victor, at Trier in the fall of the same year. What exactly happened to Maximus's family after his downfall is not recorded. He is known to have had a wife, who is recorded as having sought spiritual counsel from St. Martin of Tours during his time at Trier. 
Her ultimate fate, and even her name but see the Welsh tradition below, have not been preserved in definitive historic records. The same is true of Maximus's mother and daughters, other than that they were spared by Theodosius I. One of Maximus's daughters may have been married to Enodius, proconsul Africae 395. Enodius's grandson was Petronius Maximus, another ill-fated emperor, who ruled in Rome for only 77 days before he was stoned to death while fleeing from the Vandals on May 24, 455. Other descendants of Enodius, and thus possibly of Maximus, included Initius Olibrius, emperor in 472, but also several consuls and bishops such as Saint Magnus Felix Enodius, bishop of Pavia c. 514-21. We also encounter an otherwise unrecorded daughter of Magnus Maximus, Severa, on the pillar of Elisig, an early medieval inscribed stone in Wales which claims her marriage to Vortigern, king of the Britons. Role in British and Breton history Maximus's bid for imperial power in 383 coincides with the last date for any evidence of a Roman military presence in Wales, the Western Pennines, and the fortress of Diva. Coins dated later than 383 have been found in excavations along Hadrian's Wall, suggesting that troops were not stripped from it, as was once thought. In the De Exidio et Conquestu Britanniae written c. 540, Gildas says that Maximus left Britain not only with all of its Roman troops, but also with all of its armed bands, governors, and the flower of its youth, never to return, having left with the troops and senior administrators, and planning to continue as the ruler of Britain in the future, his practical course was to transfer local authority to local rulers. Welsh legend supports that this happened, with stories such as Broodwood Maxon Wledig, English, The Dream of Emperor Maximus, where he not only marries a wondrous British woman thus making British descendants probable, but also gives her father sovereignty over Britain thus formally transferring authority from Rome back to the Britons themselves. The earliest Welsh genealogies give Maximus referred to as Maxon, Maxon Wledig, or Emperor Maximus the role of founding father of the dynasties of several medieval Welsh kingdoms, including those of Powys and Gwent. He is given as the ancestor of a Welsh king on the Pillar of Elisig, erected nearly 500 years after he left Britain, and he figures in lists of the 15 tribes of Wales. After he became Emperor of the West, Maximus would return to Britain to campaign against the Picts and Scots, i.e., Irish, probably in support of Rome's long standing allies the Damnani, Votadini, and Novante, all located in modern Scotland. While there, he likely made similar arrangements for a formal transfer of authority to local chiefs. The later rulers of Galloway, home to the Novante, would claim Maximus as the founder of their line, the same as did the Welsh kings. The 9th century Historia Britannum gives another account of Maximus and assigns him an important role. The seventh emperor was Maximianus, he withdrew from Britain with all its military force, slew Gratianus the king of the Romans, and obtained the sovereignty of all Europe. Unwilling to send back his warlike companions to their wives, families, and possessions in Britain, he conferred upon them numerous districts from the lake on the summit of Mons Jovis, to the city called Kant Guic, and to the western tumulus, that is Cruc Occident. These are the Armoric Britons, and they remain there to the present day. In consequence of their absence, Britain being overcome by foreign nations, the lawful heirs were cast out, till God interposed with his assistance. Modern historians believe that this idea of mass British troop settlement in Brittany by Maximus may very well reflect some reality, as it accords with archaeological and other historical evidence and later Breton traditions. Armorica declared independence from the Roman Empire in 407 CE, but contributed archers for Flavius Aetius's defence against Attila the Hun, and its king Riothamus was subsequently mentioned in contemporary documents as an ally of Rome's against the Goths. Despite its continued usage of two distinct languages, Breton and Gallo, and extensive invasions and conquests by Franks and Vikings, Armorica retained considerable cultural cohesion into the 13th century. Maximus also established a military base in his native Gaiaisia, i.e., Galicia Spain, which persisted as a cultural entity despite occupation by the Subi in 409, see Kingdom of Galicia. This kingdom successfully resisted the Moors and subsequently initiated the Spanish Reconquista. Aetius sent large numbers of Alans to both Armorica and Galicia following the defeat of Attila at the Battle of the Catalonian Plains. 
The Alans evidently assimilated quickly into the local Celtic cultures, contributing their own legends, e.g., to the Arthurian cycle of romances. <laughs> Welsh legend Legendary versions of Maximus's career in which he marries the Welsh princess Ellen may have circulated in popular tradition in Welsh-speaking areas from an early date. Although the story of Helen and Maximus's meeting is almost certainly fictional, there is some evidence for the basic claims. He is certainly given a prominent place in the earliest version of the Welsh triads which are believed to date from c. 1100 and which reflect far older traditions. Welsh poetry also frequently refers to Maxon as a figure of comparison with later Welsh leaders. These legends come down to us in two separate versions. Geoffrey of Monmouth According to Geoffrey of Monmouth's fictional Historia Regum Britanniae, c. 1136, the basis for many English and Welsh legends, Maximianus as he calls him, was a Roman senator, a nephew of Coel Hen through Coel's brother Eoelinus, and king of the Britons following the death of Eudif Hen. Geoffrey writes this came about because Octavius wanted to wed his daughter to just such a powerful half-Roman half-Briton and to give the kingship of Britain, as a dowry, to that husband, so he sent a message to Rome offering his daughter to Maximian. Caradocus, the Duke of Cornwall, had suggested and supported the marriage between Octavius's daughter and Maximian. Maximian accepted the offer and left Rome for Britain. Geoffrey claims further that Maximian gathered an army as he sacked Frankish towns along the way. He invaded Clausentum modern Southampton unintentionally and nearly fought the army of the Britons under Conan Mariadoc before agreeing to a truce. Following further negotiations, Maximian was given the kingship of Britain and Octavius retired. Five years into his kingship, Magnus Maximus assembled a vast fleet and invaded Gaul, leaving Britain in the control of Caradocus. Upon reaching the Kingdom of Armorica historically, the region between the Loire and Seine rivers, later comprising Brittany, Normandy, Anjou, Maine and Touraine, he defeated the king and killed thousands of inhabitants. Before departing to Rome, he summoned Coninus, the rebellious nephew of Octavius, and asked him to rule as king of the land, which was renamed Brittany, or Little Britain. Conan's men married native women after cutting out their tongues to preserve the purity of their language. Geoffrey of Monmouth presents this legend to explain the Welsh name for Brittany, Lida, as originating from Lled Ta or half silent. Given that Conan was well established in genealogies as the founder of Brittany, this account is certainly connected to an older tradition than Geoffrey. Following the death of Caradocus, rule of Britain as regent passed to Dionotus, who, facing a foreign invasion, appealed to Maximus, who finally sent a man named Gracianus Municeps with two legions to stop the attack. He killed many thousands before the invaders fled to Ireland. Maximus died in Rome soon after and Dionotus became the official king of the Britons. Unfortunately, before he could begin his reign, Gracianus took hold of the crown and made himself king over Dionotus. The dream of Maxon Wledig Although the Mabinogion tale The Dream of Maxon Wledig is written in later manuscripts than Geoffrey's version, the two accounts are so different that scholars agree the dream cannot be based purely on Geoffrey's version. The dream's account also seems to accord better with details in the triads, so it perhaps reflects an earlier tradition. Maxon Wledig, the Emperor of Rome, dreams one night of a lovely maiden in a wonderful, far-off land. Awakening, he sends his men all over the earth in search of her. With much difficulty they find her in a rich castle in Wales, daughter of a chieftain based at Segenshium Carnarvon, and lead the emperor to her. Everything he finds is exactly as in his dream. The maiden, whose name is Helen or Ellen, accepts and loves him. Because Ellen is found a virgin, Maxon gives her father sovereignty over the island of Britain and orders three castles built for his bride. In Maxon's absence, a new emperor seizes power and warns him not to return. With the help of men from Britain led by Ellen's brother Coninus Welsh, Sinan Mariadoc, Breton, Conan Mariadeg, Maxon marches across Gaul and Italy and recaptures Rome. In gratitude to his British allies, Maxon rewards them with a portion of Gaul that becomes known as Brittany. Topic. Later literature 
The prominent place of Maxon in history, Welsh legend and in the matter of Britain means he is often a character or referred to in historical and Arthurian fiction. Such stories include Stephen R. Lawhead's Pendragon Cycle, Mary Stewart's The Hollow Hills, Jack White's Camelot Chronicles, M. J. Tro's Britannia series, Nancy Mackenzie's Queen of Camelot and Rudyard Kipling's Puck of Pooks Hill. The popular Welsh folk song Ymaohyd, recorded by David Ewan in 1981, recalls Maxon Wledig and celebrates the continued survival of the Welsh people since his days. See also Pillar of Elisig Primary sources He is mentioned in a number of ancient and medieval sources Ammianus Marcellinus Rerum Gesterum Libri Key Supersunt 31.4.9 Geoffrey of Monmouth Histories of the Kings of Britain v.5-6 Gildas de Exidio et Conquestu Britanniae 2.13-14 Nennius Historia Britannum 27, 29 Orosius Historium Adversum Paganos 7.34 Pacatus Panegyricus Latini Pacati de Prani Dictus Theodosio Prosper Tiro of Aquitaine Chronicon 384, 388 Socrates Scholasticus Historia Ecclesiastica v.8, v.11 Sozomen Historia Ecclesiastica 7.13 Sulpicius Severus Dialogy 2.6, 3.11, 13 Sulpicius Severus Historia Sacra 2. 49-51 Sulpicius Severus Vita Sancti Martini XX Triad Yn Wise Pridine the Welsh Triads Zosimus Historia Nova <laughs>